All righty. Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to our virtually Hamilton session on the interview. My name is Caitlin Oliver, and I'm one of the Associate Deans of Admission here at Hamilton College, and very excited to talk with you this evening um, about a component of the admission process that is not required, but at Hamilton, we really value it for both students and for us as we get a chance to get to know you and for you to get to know the institution through the interview. At Hamilton, relationships matter, and it's one of the best ways to explore your potential fit with Hamilton by doing an interview with one of our amazing senior fellows who I have joined with me this evening. They recently joined our team and will provide some insight into their own experiences, not only as an interviewer, but as an interviewee. Um, and we'll share some tips about how to approach the college interview process and some benefits of doing one. Um, also joined with me this evening is my colleague, Nikki Barron, um, who will be working in the background, um, answering any questions that you pose in the Q&A in the chat. So feel free to utilize that to ask your questions throughout the session, um, and she will answer them throughout and we'll have some time for a Q&A at the end. But we will get started with some introductions. As I said, my name is Caitlin Oliver. I'm one of the Associate Deans of Admission here at Hamilton College. And I've been conducting college interviews for about six years. Um, it's been a great opportunity to get to talk with prospective students and learn a bit more about what you are interested in and involved in and what, you're, uh, what you wanna pursue in college. A fun fact about me is that I love to travel and I'm currently in New York City traveling on behalf of Hamilton. I will pass it on to Mike to kick off the introductions of the senior fellows. Hey everyone, my name is Mike Altman. I'm a senior here at Hamilton, obviously. I use he, him pro pronouns and I'm from Chicago, Illinois. I am a philosophy major and sociology minor. And some of the activities that I do on this campus, I am a varsity athlete, I play baseball here. Uh, I'm an Adirondack Adventure orientation leader and a Hamilton Outing Club leader, which means I get to take some small groups into the woods for a weekend or two. Um, and uh, I'm a student bartender here at the Little Pub. We have one bar on campus, and uh, I'm very proud to say that I'm one of the bartenders. So please stop on by if you're coming through. My name is Reagan Flores. I'm a senior admissions fellow. Uh, I go by she, her pronouns. I'm from Deadwood, South Dakota. I'm a Chinese and dance double major and on campus outside of working in admissions, I'm also captain of HEAT, which is our hip hop dance group here at Hamilton. We perform at the football and basketball halftime shows. I'm also the vice president of the Student Dance Alliance and I'm an opportunity program scholar. Hi everyone, um, I'm Emily Wong. I am a senior admissions fellow, so I'm a senior at Hamilton. I use she, her pronouns. Um, I'm from Honolulu, Hawaii. Um, I'm a bio major and on campus um, this, this year, um, a little busy for me, but I am doing some, uh, I play club volleyball. I am, uh, I'm the vice president for the pre-health club and uh, yeah. Awesome. Thank you all for introducing yourselves. I'm very excited for our conversation this evening. So to kick it off, we're going to talk a little bit about sort of the interview in general and kind of benefits of an interview. The purpose of an interview is mutually beneficial, right, for both people, the interviewer and the interviewee. Um, it is a conversation. Um, it's a, at Hamilton, interviews are both evaluative and informative. So it's a chance for us to get to hear about you outside of your application to maybe provide some context about who you are, um, but also informative for you to ask your specific questions to a current student or an admission officer about things at Hamilton specifically to your interests, um, which dives a little bit deeper from sort of a general information session or a tour of campus because it is a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Um, it helps in filling the gaps to your application if that is the case. And it's very similar to an inter to an essay, but the interview gives us the opportunity or gives you the opportunity to share your story with us. And so we can hear your voice um, and how you convey that to us. Um, students can talk to us about Hamilton and how they translate to your interests and what you hope to get involved in. And there are several types of interviews that you can participate in. 
We have in-person interviews and specifically at Hamilton, we have a limited number of in-person interviews on Saturdays this fall, but we also have virtual interviews uh, Monday through Friday. And what's nice is that there is no difference between a virtual interview and an in-person interview. They are with the same people, a senior fellow or an admission officer. Um, and it's still an evaluative process. So it's really important to do what's best for you and what works with your schedule, but understanding that it, it is flexible, especially having as many virtual off offerings as we do. Sort of uh, in general around other institutions, some institutions may offer alumni interviews in your area. Um, admission officers may be doing interviews when they're on the road traveling. Um, and then of course, with the senior fellow. What's nice is that as you're thinking about timing and when you interview at an institution, you can interview before you submit your application or after you submit your application, um, which is really nice. So you don't have to wait or delay the time, especially because most interviews for college, um, they end in January. So you don't wanna miss that opportunity if you wait until January 4th to submit your application and then all the interviews after that are filled. So being proactive in doing your research and figuring out deadlines and what works best for your schedule um, is going to help in preparation. Now going into interview tips, and I'm going to share my screen with a helpful slide with a resource to our website for you to see um, sort of some tips and tricks that we recommend for uh, students as they go through the interview process. So let me just bring it to full screen. Awesome, interview tips. Remember that the interview is more of a discussion than an interview. I know when people hear interview, they equate it to job interviews, and that can be a little overwhelming where you think someone is just asking you questions and you're responding. But most college interviews are a conversation. We wanna make sure that you are in a space that is comfortable for you and you want to engage and share as much as you can about yourself is that what we want to know about? We want to know about who you are, what you, what your aspirations are, what your passions are, and how, like, what are you looking for in a college, and how you plan to utilize your college experience to fulfill your goals. Preparation and practice is going to be the most helpful for you as you think about an interview. I always recommend students, you know, write down the list of things that you're involved in. Write down um, your favorite courses in your junior and senior year. Why are you interested in um, the major that you wanna pursue? And really think about that and practice answering your questions with someone um, in your school or at home or with a friend. Having someone who knows you um, sort of in practicing is really helpful. Or in having someone who doesn't know you as well is also very helpful to sort of make sure your messaging is getting conveyed to them. But preparation and practice is a great tip as you are thinking about the interview process. This also goes hand in hand in thinking about sort of preparing and knowing about the institution that you are interviewing at, right? Maybe you're doing a little research on Hamilton in this case, if we're talking about Hamilton College or that other institution so that you can find ways in which what you're doing now sort of translates into the college experience or what is really interesting to you at that institution that you wanna find out more. Start with a confident handshake and eye contact. We're living in a new age and that, you know, maybe a shaking a hand isn't it, but definitely a confident um, stature and that you are going in and engaging and keeping that eye contact when you're meeting your interviewer um, and ensuring that they know that you are here and you're ready and prepared um, and that you're excited to talk with them. Dress for success, not a requirement. So we don't expect students to show up in suits, and that's globally, right? We don't, we don't expect you to show up in suits. Um, we want you to be comfortable in what you're wearing. Maybe not as comfortable as like ring gear or like gear that you wear to the gym, but something that is comfortable that makes you feel confident um, in terms of having a conversation with someone you may not know. Um, dressing in a way, whether it be virtual, from the top up um, and having that presentable background, or if you're going um, in for an in-person interview, just making sure you're comfortable and the clothing is appropriate. But first and foremost, making sure that you are comfortable in that attire 
because uncomfortable attire means an uncomfortable conversation because you're like trying to focus on um, making sure you're, you're close fit well. So ensuring that you are dressed for success and that is comfortable to you. In virtual, ensure you're in a quiet and well-lit space. This is really important um, in the virtual setting because we wanna make sure that we can see you and you can see us and that we can hear our conversation. So ensuring that you're in sort of your room, the background is sort of um, limited from distractions um, and in a space that you don't have to worry about noises coming up or people popping in. Um, so just ensuring that, and again, practicing that, right? We did that today when we were preparing for this session, making sure that we are in a well-lit space, our background's clear and ready to engage with each and every one of you this evening. There's more than one way to have a great interview. I think this is really important when talking with um, prospective students and that there's no sort of right answer when answering questions. We're asking the questions to get to know you. It's not about what you think we wanna hear, but it's about what you want us to hear. So making sure you're utilizing your authentic voice and really saying things that are true to who you are because you don't want the interviewer to ask a follow-up question about something that may not be fully true or something that um, is fabricated. So really thinking about um, you know, sharing your true self and knowing that there is no wrong answer and how you answer the questions that we have. I also think that what's really important is that if a question comes up that kind of throws you off or shocks you, where it's like, oh, I wasn't expecting them to ask that question, don't try to rush into an answer because you think that we are timing you, right, on how you respond. Take that time to take a breath and be thoughtful um, and answer the question um, best to your ability because there is no wrong, wrong answer. It's up to you and how you answer for us. An interview helps make your application come alive. It gives your application a voice um, and allows you to share things about yourself that we may not see. It helps provide context maybe to your transcript or maybe to the activities that you have or maybe to the job that you did in your junior or senior year. Um, maybe it helps us understand why it is you're studying what you're studying, right? If you're applying to a specific program at an institution. It really allows us to see and hear who you are and how that translates to your application. And help us help you. Um, and so what this means is that we want to hear from you, right? We are here to learn about who you are, what you wanna do, what you're interested in, what you're passionate about. And as much as you share with us, is as much as we're gonna take from that conversation, since it is evaluative, right? So feel free to be open um, and engaged um, and really thorough in your answers so that we have all we need um, in terms of knowing who you are in the interview. And there's a link to our website, which has these tips um, for you, along with like many paragraphs sort of elaborating a little bit more outside of what I talked about. So feel free to go on there and read more up on these tips, but hopefully they're helpful as you prepare um, for the future of interviews. All right, cool. So now we're gonna get into preparation, right? I have three awesome senior fellows here joined with me today. And we're gonna sort of get them talking in into our space on this evening. So we're gonna talk about how to prepare for the interview. And I talked a lot about, about that in the tips, but how you prepare is you wanna self-reflect. You wanna use that time, whether it be on the drive to the interview, if you're going in person, the night before the interview or two days before the interview to really reflect on your high school experience. You can think about it in your junior and senior year. Think about the classes you're taking, the activities you're involved in, that activity that you're really invested in and have shown a lot of growth in. Uh, think about your college search process. How has that been for you? What have you experienced? And in the case of Hamilton, you wanna think about your why Hamilton or why the institution you're interviewing at? Because a question may come up, you know, why are you interested in us? Um, what is something that um, is exciting for you um, and what you've learned about um, at Hamilton? And so really just taking that time to jot it all down, as I mentioned before. 
So for our senior fellows who are here tonight, what are things you wish you had known as a prospective student when you were preparing for your interviews to college? I'll go first. Um, I think it would have been very beneficial for me and a lot less stressful to understand that the interview process, like Caitlin said, is more of a discussion and that us senior fellows have a wealth of knowledge about Hamilton that we love to share with you. So coming with questions and asking us about Hamilton or things that you're interested in and making it a two-way discussion makes it a lot easier for the both of us uh, and we get to learn more about you as a person while conducting that interview. So having questions and uh, being willing to ask us about anything that you may be interested, I think would have been very key for me when I was interviewing. Yeah, back when I was prepping for my interview four years ago, I feel like I was so stressed out about trying to be the perfect candidate for the college I was interviewing at. I was so worried about, you know, trying to make myself seem perfect to my interviewer that I feel like there were times when I kind of lost myself and lost my own passions. So I feel like kind of looking back, something that I wish I had done differently and a piece of advice that I'd love to pass on to everyone that's prepping now is, you know, just be honest and be true to yourself. And that sounds really cheesy, but in all honesty, you know, you are your own person and the different interests you have make you unique and make you special. We don't want to hear what you think we want to hear. We want to hear about your stories, your interests, the things that make you giggle or super excited or things you could rant about for hours and hours. I mean, maybe don't rant for hours and hours, but, you know, tell us about the thing that makes you want to do that. So definitely just being true to yourself. I second what Mike and Regan both have said. Um, um, and to add to that, I think just taking a deep breath, I think always going into interviews, I'm very nervous. I'm like, oh, what are they, what are they going to think? Like what kind of questions they're going to ask? And if you're stunned with a question, as Caitlin said, I think that's what's really beneficial. Just say, hey, like, let me just think about it. Cause we're all students at the end of the day. Like we've all been in, like in your shoes and we been interviewed. So we understand like, you know, sometimes the questions you um, are asked are like kind of, you know, out of, out of the blue or like, it wasn't what you were expecting, but just take the time, reflect and think about what you're going to say. I think it's really worth it because we're all students and we get where you're going, where you're coming from. And so, uh, yeah, just take a deep breath, slow down and don't like think too much. Um, just be whatever comes to mind at first, I think is going to be the most natural thing to say. So, uh, yeah, just take your time, I would say is the biggest, biggest advice I could give. Awesome, thank you all for um, that advice. And now we're gonna do like a little role play here, right? So we're gonna do a demonstration of when an interviewee is not prepared. And Mike will serve as the interviewer and Reagan will serve as the interviewee. Hi Reagan, how are you? How have you been up? What have you been up to this summer? Um, um hmm, let me think. I, I, I had a job this summer uh and i've been working on some some summer homework too oh that's very cool and uh, i'm assuming school just started uh are there any classes that stick out as being great um well i'm taking i'm taking a calculus class i'm taking i think i'm taking a history class um and then a couple other ap classes but really excited for that history class yeah oh that's great to hear Awesome. Thanks, Mike and Reagan. And so this is an example of a student not being really prepared and really have giving vague answers, being like, um, well, I think I'm taking this, or I think I'm doing this, and not being specific or even showing like excitement, right? For what they did this summer or the start of the school year. Um, so Reagan could have been a little bit more prepared um, in terms of her responses. Um, and that's why it's really important to prepare for the interview. interview. So Emily, this has been um, a new experience for you being a student interviewer and senior fellow. Um, so how have you found the interview format to be for our prospective students? Um, I think it's, yeah, as Caitlin had mentioned, it's um, more of a conversation person it is more of a conversation like at the end of the day it is still an interview so we will be asking 
like to gauge a little bit more about your academic interests, like what you do outside of the classroom and like how you view yourself, who you surround yourself with, like just understanding you as a person, as a student and um, outside of the classroom. And so like, as you saw in Mike's demonstration, that's usually how conversations usually start. You're just like, hey, like, you know, how's your summer going? How's classes going? You know, like what you ask your friends kind of thing. So it's been um, uh, this experience is really new and so um and um uh, yeah it's been very casual i think and it's been a lot of fun just getting to know different students from different backgrounds and like what they're interested in why they're interested in certain things and yeah you see like the range of students um so that's been really exciting for me and i'm sure for my uh, senior uh, for my classmates as well Awesome. Thanks, Emily. And Reagan, if you were in the shoes of our prospective students, what would you do to keep it professional? I'm thinking about professionalism in an interview. Yeah, definitely. So this is a conversation. So don't feel, you know, the pressure. You don't have to show up in a whole suit and tie. But I feel like, you know, remembering that this is a professional interaction that you're having. So being, you know, wearing professional attire, wearing something that is presentable to others. Again, don't show up in a ball gown and a suit, but making sure that you're not wearing like a t-shirt with any swear words or any expletives or anything that might not be, you know, office appropriate or making sure that, you know, that doesn't really come through in your interview as well. Make sure that you're not, uh, you know, saying any swear words or talking about something that might not be workplace appropriate, definitely take the interview seriously. This is a part of your application process to the college. So make sure that everything that you're talking about, these are things that you are fine with having on your application to the school that you're interviewing with. So definitely just remembering, you know, you're representing yourself, uh, kind of the best of yourself during this, uh, during the interview. Awesome. And really taking that a step further when thinking about the virtual aspect as well, right? Thinking about the space that you're in, the lighting, the microphone, can they hear me? If you're in a space that maybe you can't have a blank wall or just simple things on the background, thinking about a virtual background and what that looks like for you, right? Not just a, a picture as a virtual background, but just like a simplistic blank um, screen as well um, to keep that professionalism and keep that seriousness of um, an interview. And that's why there's no distractions behind you. So Mike, if you were a prospective student, what would you do if your internet disconnects while you were doing a virtual interview? Uh, I think the first thing that everyone should understand is being early is being on time and you should always be prepared. I know that that's been touched up on. Um, make sure that you log on to the interview early. Make sure that you know that your internet works beforehand. Um, if it doesn't work beforehand, uh, cell service, use someone else's telephone. Um, send an email to admissions um, and reschedule that. We're always happy to accommodate. We understand that there's uh, stuff happens. Um, also, uh, we have a special um, video system that sometimes doesn't work for all individuals. Um, there's a chat feature and we are all prepared with a Zoom link at ready at hand um, and can make any accommodation if needed to use other platforms so that we can still have this interview during the time allotted because we do also understand that it may be difficult to make such uh, rearrangements. So uh, we can reschedule, but be prepared, check your internet beforehand and worst case scenario, let us know as soon as you can. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, I think that that's great advice because stuff does happen, right? Especially in the virtual world, um, but also in person, right? Say you're um, stuck in traffic on your way to the interview, or say you get lost on campus trying to find the room or the building that your interview is in. It's really important to send an email or call the office that you're interviewing at to let them know that you're lost or that you're running late. Because at a lot of places, if you're five or even 10 minutes late, the interview is like marked as like a no-show or canceled. And so it's really important to communicate throughout your process if you are having difficulties. Um, also, when you think about the interview in person or virtual, the long pauses that happen or the distractions that come up. I think what's really important that we understand life goes on and it's not stopping, right? And just being communicative in your interview and saying like, I am so sorry, I'm like watching my younger sibling and they came into the room because something happened. Or like Emily said, if you need to take a breath or a pause when 
um, in an in-person interview saying like, can you just give me a moment to gather my thoughts, right? That is okay. That is showing that you are being intentional and very thoughtful through the interview. So now we're gonna talk about examples of interview questions. And when you're thinking about the interview, it's going to touch on different components of your experience, academics, extracurriculars, at Hamilton, we talk about the college search and then your, your, pers your personal attributes as well. And so questions could be from, you know, what are you taking this year in your senior year? Or what is your favorite class that you're taking this year that you took in your junior year? What are you thinking about studying um, when you go to college? And I wanna stop and pause on that question about what do you think about studying, right? We are at a liberal arts institution and we really embrace students who like, or wanna, be, uh, wanna explore different academic areas and you may not know what you want to study. So if that question ever comes up, don't fret, right? It's okay to say, you know, I'm still figuring it out. I'm still trying to, I'm really interested in these courses. So trying to figure out what major may align to that in college. That is an okay answer because it's thoughtful and it's providing a space that you are trying to be thoughtful and thinking about what you're going to study. And then in terms of extracurricular, questions that may come up is was what is a favorite activity you're involved in or what is an area in which you feel like you've grown the most um college search process what are things you did this summer um did you have a job did you do a study abroad opportunity um and then for personality which is really ambiguous for some students it may be like what are you passionate in um, how do you view community or what does community mean to you? Um, there could be uh, questions about uh, what are you looking forward to most in college? A uh, question that I always ask is um, how do you plan to be an engaged participant in your college community? That is a really, uh, that's one of my favorite questions and I love to hear students' responses to that. But I do wanna open it up um, to the panelists to see if there's a favorite question that you ask um, to your students that you interview? Uh, so my favorite overarching question to ask is, what does a really good weekend look like for you? I find that that touches a lot on extracurriculars and personality, and especially if the conversation's starting to get a little bit slower, um, you start to understand that you do do a lot more with your time that you may not necessarily want to share uh, off the top of your head. But when it comes out in that kind of a setting, it um, creates a lot, much larger dialogue for us to work with you. So you can talk about your favorite book that you've been reading. Um, and I know that we all read a lot too, so we can connect to that and um, a lot of other activities. And it's a great way for you to get to explain a little bit more about who you are and what you do. My favorite question to ask is I'll usually ask students, what is a moment in your life where you've been the proudest of yourself, whether it's overcoming an obstacle or accomplishing a goal? I always love to hear their answers to this question because it can be in such a wide range of areas. Sometimes it will be about something academic, like an academic accomplishment they had or an extracurricular uh, challenge that they accomplished or a personal growth moment for themselves. And I love hearing just the wide variety of answers that students have. And I also feel like hearing about someone's proud this moment says a lot about you know how they view themselves and the things about themselves that they're confident about and I love hearing people you know talk about themselves in such a positive light as well so I feel like this is one of my favorite questions to ask during an interview so I have like two questions that are kind of like very similar that I like to ask um I kind of go it's kind of really awkward because I go straight from like oh like um, what do you want to do in college? And then I ask this question, like, what do you value most in people kind of thing? And I feel like that's like a little jump that they're like not expecting, but that's kind of usually the first kind of question that I ask going into like getting to know like your personality a little more and following up with that question. I asked like, could you tell me about your friends? Like the people you kind of surround yourself with? I do think that that, um, you are like who you surround yourself with, I think, and I do believe that. And so just um, getting to know a little bit more about who you surround yourself with, who you spend a lot of time with and why you like to spend time with them gives me um, a better understanding of who you are as a person, what you like to do and like what you value. Um, and so I think that's just important with like meeting people and like who you choose to um, spend your time with. 
Awesome. Thank you all. Those are great questions. <laughs> um, I might have to use one of those in my interview as well. So now we're going to do another role play um, because we just gave you examples of questions that we as interviewers ask, but we wanted to do a role play to show what a Q&A segment of an interview will look like or could look like. So Reagan this time will serve as the interviewer and Emily will serve as the interviewee, the student asking Reagan questions. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> awesome. So Emily, going into your senior year, can you tell me about maybe a class you are super excited to be taking this upcoming year? Um, I'm really excited to take my AP Calc class. Um, I have all of my, like my best friends are going to be in it. And I think that that's going to be a really good time for us to collaborate and talk. And I think that it's going to be very um, academically challenging for me, which I think would be good. I uh, tend to really like classes where I can go through and problem solve. So I'm very excited about um, answering questions. And I've heard that my teacher is um, a wonderful teacher who knows what he's talking about. So I'm really excited to be working with him uh, and doing some AP problem sets. Yeah, AP Calc sounds super cool. It sounds like you have a little bit of an inclination towards more math-based uh, courses because you said you love problem solving, but kind of looking towards college and maybe some classes you've re you'd really like to try out in college. Have there been any academic subject areas that you're interested in but never had a chance to try before that you'd love to give a shot in college? Yeah, um, I know that Hamilton has a like a linguistics like um, minor or major. Um, and so I would kind of explore that a little bit. We didn't have that in my high school, but I am very um, interested in how, like, I guess, like where language comes from and getting like learning more about the roots and things like that. I, I mean, I don't know too much about it, but I am very fascinated with language and um, being able to speak another language. I do find that it is fascinating to compare the two. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Awesome, great. Thank you, Reagan and Emily. And I think that provided a great way for you to show how one, Reagan asked the academic questions and how two, Emily responded, but in a way that like also invoked some of Hamilton, like brought in Hamilton and left space for Reagan to provide further clarification about different programs at Hamilton as well. So thank you for that, that role play. So now transitioning about like, should you interview, right? What makes a good interview? Um, and if, as you're deciding, should I interview or should I not? So I think what's really important is that no one interview will admit a student, um, but a really poor interview could be uh, rough for your application, right? Um, and so really thinking about if the interview is a good format for you, um, and then you are welcome to have that interview. So really thinking about, would you thrive in an interview setting? Would you think you would thrive better if it's in-person versus virtual? Or do you think a virtual interview would be helpful because you can have your notes sort of on the screen so you can like still be comfortable um, and answer questions specifically? And I know there was a question in the chat about can an interview hurt your application? I think that it really depends on your preparation for that interview, right? If you are someone who is not excited about learning, not excited about um, the institution that you're interviewing for, you know that could hurt you, right? Because it shows that you're disinterested. You're disinter disinterested. Oh my goodness, words um, in the institution or in the things that you want to do. But if you're someone who is prepared and does a lot of the tips and tricks and um, advice that we we gave you tonight, it could be a really good thing. So really. Um, figuring it out and thinking about it because your decision about whether or not to have an interview should be based on your personal choice and your comfort um, in a conversation. At Hamilton, if you don't think an interview is um, a good option, we do have a personal URL, a written supplement, or a Hamilton hello option in the supplemental optional section of your application. So there are other ways to add your personality and your insight to your application apart from doing an interview. So again, do your research and figure out what institutions have to offer and figure out what's best for you. <clears throat> okay, so interview, tell your story and be yourself, carry the conversation with thorough responses 
and ask questions to learn more about the college. Those are the three things um, that you should be focused on and what you should, how you should prepare to be ready for the interview. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me, I should have some water. And so when thinking about the interview, I would love for our senior fellows um, to answer, what is your favorite question that you have been asked in an interview? Which was asked in the Q&A. So I'm just pulling that from the Q&A. <laughs> this is from the Q&A? Yeah. Or, uh, favorite, sorry. Yeah, not a problem. My favorite question that I was asked is, um, do professors at Hamilton uh, listen to their students? And I think that's a really inquisitive question because it shows that you care a lot about the relationship with you and your professor and teacher and mentor. And I think that Hamilton is an institution certainly where um, the professor student relationship is a two way street. We get to speak with them, they get to speak with us. And I think it's great because we get to collaborate with one another and question one another. And we, we want you to talk up and, and uh, bring up your opinion. I mean, it's a great space here at Hamilton. It's a very inviting uh, space. Um, so that was certainly my favorite question. I love getting kind of specific questions. I feel like a lot of students will ask me, you know, what are you involved in on campus? Or they'll ask me about maybe a certain club or organization that they think matches with some of their interests that I've learned about throughout the interview. So if they'll say like, Regan, I'm really interested in, uh, in the outdoors. And I'll be like, okay, uh, and uh, here, here's the outing club and they'll ask more questions about the outing club or ask specifically about things on campus that they could see themselves in. I feel like that kind of helps them picture themselves at Hamilton and also me kind of see how excited they are to be part of this community. Um, my favorite question that I was asked was what differentiates Hamilton from other liberal arts colleges and I was a little bit stunned with asking this um stunned when the um the interviewer asked me this question because um I haven't been to the other NASCACs or other schools so I can't really um compare it like side by side in that way but it gives me an opportunity more so to talk about the faculty talk about student life talk about more so what Hamilton is and um yeah to give more information about this school which um yeah so that one was a little hard for me to answer but it did give me more of a leeway to talk about Hamilton and different aspects of it rather than one Right, and I think that question that I've been asked as like an admission officer um, has been like, why did I choose to work at Hamilton? Um, that's something that I don't really think, like I don't really think about, like why did I choose to work here, right? Um, and then I'll, it shows sort of the community more broadly in terms of how staff interact with sort of students or faculty and the community in general, and really see like what is valued um, in that community. So that's one of my favorite questions um, to that I have been asked in an interview. And things um, that I think students should avoid in an interview as you're as you're preparing um, is first, we've been talking about it all night. Take the interview seriously and in a professional manner, right? Use appropriate language. Try not to use slang or, or swear words. Because remember who you're talking to, even if you're talking to a senior fellow, right? Yes, they are a current student and they're close to you in age, but they are still like a representative of the institution in which you're interviewing at. And this is their job. So you want to treat them with as just much respect as anyone who'd be interviewing. So making sure you're using appropriate language and asking appropriate questions when thinking about the interview process, right? And just representing yourself well, representing your school well, um, and preparing, making sure you're doing your research ahead of time, um, like not saying, I'm looking for an urban setting when, when you're interviewing at Hamilton, when Hamilton is not in an urban setting, right? Or I'm looking for a large research institution, and Hamilton is not a large research institution. Now, if you're looking at places in urban settings or large research institutions, great questions, right? Because it applies to the institution that you're looking at, but making sure you're doing your research and coming with questions that are pertinent to the institution that you're working at or interviewing at. Um, definitely the disinterest in the college. Like, you know, I'm only interviewing because my mom is making me apply. 
or I'm only interviewing because I had a counselor who went to this institution and he said, I should check it out. You know, yes, you can say, I found Hamilton because my college counselor is an alum and they loved their experience and told me about your biology program and I'm interested in biology and that's why I'm interviewing, right? So adding layers to that and showing that preparation and showing that you are just as invested in the conversation is really important. When thinking about virtual spaces, also avoid having other people in the room. If mom, dad, grandpa, aunt, parent, or guardian wants to be in the room hovering over that interview, ensuring that you feel com confident and comfortable and saying like, hey, this is a conversation just for me and the college, like I need some space. Or when you are going for your interview at the institution, as you know, your parents are gonna be, or your guardians are gonna be waiting downstairs for you. And just making sure that you um, have the, the confidence to say like, this is my time to engage with an institution. And understanding that interviews can range from 30 minutes to 45 minutes, depending on the institute, depending on the institution. So it's really important to make sure that you have enough content, not only to share, but to ask to fill that time. Because you never want to shortchange um, your experience in the interview. So as you're sort of finalizing your, your thoughts um, and thinking about um, preparing for an interview and going for an interview, there is a checklist um, that you should really think about. The first thing, did you do your research on the school that you're interviewing at? Do you have a confirmation that you are registered for an interview, right? Ensuring you have that Zoom link or Slate link that Hamilton uses, ensuring that you're confirmed for an in-person interview is really important because you don't want to just show up, right? Um, at a time that you're not assigned for. Practice eye contact and being attentive. Eye contact can be very uncomfortable, especially in a virtual setting. In a virtual setting, it's like, where do I look? Do I look at the camera? Do I look down? Do I look at the screen? Do I look at the person, right? And that's okay to be nervous about that. I always go with looking at the screen because I'm comfortable with that. A lot of people say, look at the camera so that it shows that your eye contact is there. Um, but whatever is comfortable for you, but practice that. Also with in-person interviews making sure that you go when you address people, look at them in the eye, shake their hand if you feel comfortable doing that and just being attentive in the interview and engaged. You know, with the head nods, the body language, um, the nonverbal cues, which are important. Dressing appropriately, which uh, Reagan and all of us talked about earlier, being comfortable, but not too comfortable. Um, <laughs> so uh, think about that. Is the information I am sharing important to me and am I being myself? We talked a lot about authenticity um, in our conversation. Um, and, and Mike, I would love for you to share um, a little bit about how you feel like authenticity and being um, very true to uh, yourself comes across in an interview from a student. Like, how do you get that from them? Um, first and foremost, there is no one Hamilton student. There's no one Hamilton story. Um, it's, it's a great school because there's a diverse um, student body. And I think we feed into one another to create such a great campus uh, feel and family. Um, be yourself. I know Reagan was talking about this and Caitlin, you said, don't try to play a little bit on things that you think we want to hear because there's not really anything that we want to hear. We want to hear you. We want to be passionate with you. Um, I used to crochet when I was younger and I remember I brought that up into my interview and I talked about crocheting for about 15 minutes. Um, and that is authentically who I am was that was a big part of my life. I crochet with my grandmother growing up. Um, there's no one story. There's no one individual. Just be you. And if you're passionate about it, that comes across. And we will continue to ask you more questions about what you're passionate about, because we want to know more about who you are and how you'll contribute to this campus. Great. Thanks, Mike. Um, and going on to that, like being able to express your interest in the institution. How are the things that you're involved in aligned with the mission and the values and what is offered at Hamilton? And have you prepared questions about the institution for the interviewer? Um, and Reagan, when thinking about how an interviewee can prepare questions, what kind of advice would you offer to them? Like what kind of questions, we talked about the kind of questions that you've enjoyed answering from students, 
but how do you think students can prepare to ask questions to interviewers? So I think definitely first trying to picture yourself at this institution is a great first step to take. Think of really what do I have in common with this school? What is a way I could succeed at this school? And then kind of fill in the gaps with a lot of those questions. If you're interested in something, uh, maybe be like, do you have a club that fits this interest that I have? If you are very interested in any certain department that you'd love to be in, you could ask, do you know anything about this department? Or do you have any friends that are in this department? So really trying to fill in the gaps between yourself, your interest, and how you would see your yourself at the institution that you're interviewing for. And then I feel like a lot of those questions will kind of naturally just fill into those gaps. If you're interested in uh, the open curriculum, then you'll naturally be asking questions about the open curriculum, about exploring those classes, seeing how it works, the requirements. So just think about yourself and what you're personally interested in. Awesome. Thanks, Reagan. Um, to sort of round out the interview, right, after you talked with that person for 30 to 45 minutes, the interview has come to an end making sure that you get the contact information for the person who you have just interviewed with, whether it be an email um, contact, if it's a senior fellow or like a student interview, or ensuring that you get the contact information for your admission representative, right? Or where you can find that information to follow up with another representative in the office. It's important for you to get that contact because at the end of an interview, you should send a thank you note or an email um, just to say, you know, thank you for your time um, and interviewing me. I really appreciated our conversation and enjoyed sharing about this, this, and that, about my experiences. Um, looking forward to learning more about Hamilton and if you're deciding to apply and applying um, and just showing that gratitude for them taking the time out of their schedule to interview, to interview you. And I know our senior fellows really enjoy getting getting thank you uh, notes from um, prospective students um, and just just to be appreciative. So now I'm going to we have about 10 minutes left and I am going to go to the Q&A if there's questions or take this time to write down some questions if you have them. I do know a question came in specifically for Emily. Um, so Emily being from Hawaii. Um, how do you find the weather at Hamilton? Believe it or not, I love it. Um, what was it called? Um, right now, uh, um, Clinton's weather is very similar to Hawaii, where it's a little bipolar, I would say. It's rainy one day, it's sunny the next. I think that is very much like Hawaii. But I guess you're talking more about um, winter, which would make the most sense. But um, I experienced all my first season, like all the seasons here at Hamilton. And I'm very lucky for that because our fall here is gorgeous when the colors start to change, or when the leaves start to change and it, it gets really pretty. And um, during the winter, um, I've been told that I live like in a winter wonderland in, in that sense, because Hamilton kind of does everything for me that I don't have to do. Like, I don't have to get snow off my car. I don't have to plow anything. So um, I just have to dress for the weather and walk out and I'll be fine. But I've actually really enjoyed the weather at Hamilton. And so yeah, and I go home during December. So that's that break um, from the snow, which I think most people, might be upset with me about, but um, but it's nice. It's a nice break from the snow and I come back and it's cold again. Um, I do prefer like freezing than I do sweating. So there's that. So um, I can layer up when I'm cold, but when I'm sweating, I'm just sweating and it's just gross. So I do like Hamilton's weather, prefer like yeah, especially the winter. Great, thanks, Emily. There is a question um, about tips to ease awkwardness during an interview. So we talked about tips on how to prepare, how to have the conversation, but I would love for our interviewers to sort of share, like how have you handled, like if there's awkwardness in the conversation and putting people at ease? So whoever, Mike, I see you on mute, so I'll let you go first. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely, I dealt with this. I was immensely um, nervous going through my interview and I sympathize and empathize with that. Um, so I preface my interviews with, do not worry. Um, we are just going to have a discussion. This is a conversation between you and I where I'm just going to be like a friend of yours asking you questions about what you're interested in. It's a dialogue. Um, and for example, I get not having an answer on hand. Sometimes you freeze. 
Um, and we can work with that. We're trained that uh, we can play around with different questions. Uh, uh, another fun question is what's on your bucket list? What are some things that you really wanna do with your life? Um, we can be very interactive and make this um, an inviting and enjoyable space for you. Like Mike said, we all have an arsenal of questions that we can ask, and they range, you know, from like, what is a song recommendation that you have for me for something a lot deeper, like what's something you want to do with your life. Uh, one thing that I love to do when I notice that a student might be feeling a little bit nervous or there might be a little bit of awkwardness is I try to find just something that we have in common. And a lot of times I'll end up asking, you know, what is your, who's your favorite music artist? What your, What is your favorite video game? And then we'll be able to kind of bond over something. Or if we have a shared video game that we love to play, I'll ask, you know, like, what's your favorite character? Who do you, who do you like to play in this video game? So being able to really find something in common, I feel like without fail, every single time we can find something in common like that, they just relax. And it's so nice to have a conversation uh, with someone when you have something in common. So as soon as we find that thing that we both click on, I feel like the awkwardness just disappears. <laughs> awesome. Oh, go ahead. Oh, Emily, did you have anything to add? Okay, good, okay. <laughs> so th there's another question. There's a lot of questions in here that I wanna touch on. Um, and so there is a question about advice for controlling the flow of the interview the way you want. In terms of like, if a student is giving too much about a trivial fact about themselves, um, and wanna try to break away to move on to something more important, like how, what is a good tip for students to think about flow and how they organize their thoughts? I'm gonna say the first thing in that preparation is like the key in terms of helping you with flow, because if you write down the things you want to say, you have them succinctly in your mind and thought out before you reply. I know Mike did also unmute, so I would like, I'll throw um, the microphone to you. Yeah, I think it's very difficult for us if we need to interrupt you to ask another question. Um, so if we go a 45 minute period only asking you two questions, it's more difficult for us to get a gauge, unless it's a very fluid, conversation, which could be very difficult to have. Um, stay on topic. I think it's very important to understand the question that's being asked of you. Um, know that you're asking, that we are asking this question for the purpose um, to get to know a little bit more about one specific side of you. What's your favorite class? Why is this your favorite class? We have follow-up questions for you prepared if we don't feel like you gave us enough information, um, which also is not a problem. Um, so make sure you answer the question that's being asked. Great. I can say something. Um, oh, I think yeah. that um, coming into the interview, uh, I think having just a relaxed demeanor, like they, I think the, we are kind of trained to like talk to you, not like talk to you, of course, like we know how to um, converse and stuff like that, but it's not like um, I had a few interviews where the person would start listing like, hey, this is what I do. This is what I do. What This is what I do. Like, um, we're not like, this is not a, like, me checking your resume this is more like hey like um just as Mike said just answer the question at hand or like you know how's your summer going you know give us a brief about that because we want to hit a few things about you your academic interests your extracurriculars like um your personality so just take a deep breath you don't have to give us your entire resume or like what you do we will like be able to cover that throughout the interview um and yeah we'll also ask follow-up questions to like get more in depth about why you do certain things why you enjoy certain things or um things like that so just just um yeah let the interview take itself you don't have to um list everything um that you're doing because we will we will hit on that eventually Great, thanks you both. Um, and Mike, there's a specific question for you in the Q&A. Uh, Mike, what's the most interesting conversation you've had with someone as a bartender at the little pub on campus? Um, I think this is my favorite. I actually told this story today to another one of my professors, but a professor came in and uh, asked me to help them with their fantasy baseball lineup. Um, and we went on for about half an hour talking about which pitcher for them to start and what games were going on. And I think that's a really good tell for just the out of office hours, out of school scene um, with the professor student relationship. Um, I mean, the pub is on campus, but uh, professors come all the time and I get to see all my, all my teachers will come and say hi and support me behind the bar. Um, yeah, I think it was, 
that had to have been my favorite interaction because I was not expecting my professor to come in and uh, ask me about something so not school related, but something that I know both of us are very passionate about. Well, now I know they're passionate about it too. Great. Um, there is another question from Mike um, <laughs> regarding varsity athletics. Is the interview process um, the same for recruited athletes as for a general applicant? And if it is, would it be good to talk about being a recruit being recruited in my interview? So the first part in answering that is that the interview process is the same for everyone. Um, and so I'll have Mike, if you want to add on to that, but it is the same for everyone. Um, I, I think I can speak on behalf of all athletes that we are not one dimensional. Uh, there's a lot more to you than the fact that you play X sport. Uh, I play baseball, but I've done a lot more other things with my time. And I think that's we Hamilton being in NASCAC school in particular, you're a student athlete, a student first here. Um, so it's it's still a selective process and the interview is still the same. So yes, I did talk about the fact that I wanted to play baseball here, um, but there's far more in my life that makes me me um, that I would like to hear about as an interviewer uh, interviewing another who another student who wants to be a varsity athlete. Great, thanks Mike. Uh, there is a question in here about how is the interviewer chosen for the prospective student? Um, it is random at, at Hamilton. It's whoever's um, on signed up for that shift, they get randomly assigned to a student. So that's how we do it at Hamilton. Um, so I answered that live. Uh, oh, this is an interesting question. Um, what should be the fine balance between what the college wants to hear and what we want the college to know about us? Did y'all get that? Or you want me to repeat it? Okay, so what should be the fine balance between what the college wants to hear and what we want the college to know about us? I think this goes back to the whole thing about like there's no right answer, it's about what you want to tell us. We want to hear what you want to tell us. We're not looking for anything specific. Yes, the interviewers have questions that they ask, but we're not looking for a particular answer. We're looking for an answer that is true to your voice. Um, and so that's sort of the balance. It would be just always be true to yourself. Um, uh, Reagan, there's a fun question here and for you since everyone else got fun questions too. Reagan, you mentioned video games as a possible question. Do you play any? And if so, what are your favorites? I love asking about video games during interviews, especially when someone mentions they like playing video games. Great way to just automatically make it a super fun conversation. But I really love all kinds of video games from like first person shooters, but I really love like really cute games. I love Stardew Valley. Those are like 8-bit games with the cute music and you just like farm or do something really cute. Uh, recently, I've been playing Stray, uh, like cat simulator game in like a cyberpunk uh, city. So I will really play anything, but I, I mostly love my like emotional comfort games. Awesome. Thanks, Regan. And then I have two more questions here that we're going to ask since we are on the last minute of our time together. The question, what time are interviews conducted, especially for international students with different time zones from the USA? At Hamilton, our interviews are at 9.15, um, 915, 2.15, 3.15, 4.15, and 7.15 um, on Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Um, on Fridays, we don't have any 7.15 PMs. We just have the 9.15 AM. 115, 215, 315, and 415. Um, those are all virtual to help trying to accommodate all time zones. And then on Saturdays for in person interviews, those are only at 915, 1015, and 1115. Um, but again, institutions do them all very different. And so making sure that you utilize their websites to help find um, what uh, works best for your schedule. 
Um, and then there's a question on where should we go to schedule an interview? On our website, if you go to www. Oh, perfect. Um, <laughs> uh, my colleague Lucy just put it in the chat for everyone. You can go there and schedule um, an in-person or virtual interview. So our time has come to an end. Um, thank you all for your awesome questions and be in touch if any other questions do come up. Um, but we are grateful to have you join us this evening or this morning or this afternoon, wherever you're calling in from. Um, and please engage with us more virtually. We have virtually Hamilton sessions all throughout the, the fall and other virtual programs. So if you go to www.hamilton.edu slash discover, you can see all of our offerings in person and virtual. But we wish you all the best as you begin or continue this interview process. Hope you found this helpful and good luck with the rest of your senior year. Thank you for joining us.